Lord Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Ghost. Beautiful. Isn't that a blessing? Now let me say to all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ the world over and to my viewers, yeah. uh, we don't turn nobody away whether you have the COVID shot or not. All of you are welcome to come to God's house. Wonderful. It's a sin to turn a sick person away when they come to God's house. You didn't know that? It's a sin. Here, yeah, yeah, here, yeah. here. To turn a sick person away when they come to God's house. Jesus came in town and they heard he was in town. They ripped the roof off of a house. That's true. And lowered a man through the roof. It's a sin. Hear this now. Uh -huh. To turn anybody away. That's sick. If they come to God's house. You better not ever. Turn a person away. If they want to come in. Let them in. Oh, yeah. If they want to be baptized. Glory to God. There's healing in that water there. They don't have to have no COVID shot to repent and be baptized. God said repent. God didn't say you got to have the shot. God said repent and be baptized. So none of the churches, better not ever, turn one person away. Not one. Because they don't have a shot. Amen. Amen. I was in the preaching pul in the pulpit preaching with the virus. Amen. And God healed me. Oh, yes. Amen. I received the email that a man came to one of the churches. And I've been blowing up the phone of the branch church. I have to investigate it. He heard the word of God, came to one of the branch temples with his children and was uh, to be baptized. Yeah. And was told he can't come in without a mask and he got to have the shot to be baptized. You ain't got to have no mask to come in God's house. Oh, no. When you say something can't be done, now you're stepping on the feet of doctrine. If you don't have no mask or no shot, you will never be turned away. And anybody turn you away, now you got me to deal with. I don't care who you are. The Bible says I was glad when they said unto me, let us go oh, yes. to the house of the Lord. That's what God put in there. And I don't care what calamity come on earth. We ain't changing it. I made this. No branch temple, no preacher, no minister, better keep, better not keep, no human. I don't care who they are for coming in the God house, not even the nurses unit. If somebody come in with no mask, don't you tell them to leave. You ain't got that kind of authority. That goes for security. Somebody coming without a mask. You better not tell them to leave. You ain't got that kind of authority. God said one thing and you said another. You are go to hell. God knows you will. God said, come ye blessed. Come. We ain't going to turn nobody away. I don't care what kind of illness you have. If you're full of leprosy and got Corona, Sharona, Sharana, yeah. Veronica, uh, uh, Megatron, yeah. Optimus Prime, Star Scream, I don't care what you got. Megatron. <laughs> Nobody from the medical team, no preacher, no brother, sister, or security. 
better not ever turn one person away from God's house. Or I'll set you down or put you out. This is God's house. God says, whosoever will, let them come. That's what God said. The calamity that go on in the earth, don't change that book. We ask that you put on a mask. We ain't going to force you. We ask you to do it. Whosoever will. I want to say, suppose they got a fever. If they want to stay, let them stay here. Let God heal them. Whosoever will. That Bible outweighs everybody. You see, I got to keep God off my back because God says, whosoever will, let them come and drink freely. Ain't that what God said? No, yo, no nurses unit, no minister, nobody. But not ever lay a stipulation upon a person who want to be baptized. Now you're putting too much authority in your hands. And when you put too much authority on your hands, you stepped on God's turf. And when you step on God's turf, that's an alarm. Give me the 23rd chapter of the book of Psalms. I want everybody to follow me. There ain't nothing wrong with having rules implemented. But those rules better not step on God's turf. Where you turn somebody away from coming into God's house and your reason is they're sick. Are you listening? Yeah. Follow me in your Bible. In the book of Psalms 23. Turn brother Mark up. Turn me ready up. Turn him up till I hear his echo coming out the speakers. That's right. In the book of Psalms 23. Yeah, turn him up some more. In that verse 1. Yeah, turn me up too. I want to ruffle the feathers of undercover heathens. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Are you listening? Yeah. Wonderful. The book of Psalms 23. Everything in the building is sick. That's right. That's right. There ain't nobody in here that's not sick. That's true, man. And I ain't talking about COVID either. I'm talking about sin. That's right. That's true. That's true, man. What am I supposed to do? Turn you away because you're in sin? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father. Glory to God, except by me. Amen. You see, the apostle said, I said all things in order when I come. You turn nobody away. If they have a fever of 200, they want to come to God's house, tell them to press their way like the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Everything must be compliant with the book, not contrary to the book. Listen. Psalms 23 and at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is, is my, my protector. Yeah. The I Lord shepherd. is my guide. Yes. The Lord is my keeper. Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I shall not want. What does he do? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He make me lie down in green pastures. Oh, yes. 
What is green pastures? A place of comfort. Place of comfort and satisfaction. Green pasture. Green pasture. Comfort. Satisfaction. Plenty to eat. God, shepherd, people, sheep. Green pastures, that which is bountiful, plentiful. God lead his people where there's plenty of truth being preached. Glory to God, the word of God is our green pasture. That's right. No dried up grass here. Not here. Not here. Green. Green pastures. You digest this, God can hear you. Why the word of God is being preached. God can deliver you while the word of God is being preached. Amen. Never turn a person away from God house. I don't care if they're so sick they can't hardly breathe. If they want to come, Jesus, who is God Almighty, said, whosoever, that pushes everybody back. Ain't nobody else got no say so when he talks. Whosoever will, let him come. Ain't nothing nobody can do about that. Nothing. nothing. Whosoever will. Who said it? The boss. And that's not me. Bible says repent and be baptized. I can't add a stipulation. Repent and you got to have a shot to be baptized. What do I look like? A fool? I got to keep it like the Bible says it. Even if a person got to burka locust but wants to be baptized, I'm taking you in there. If you got AIDS and want to be baptized, I'm taking you in there. If you got syphilis and want to be baptized, I'm taking you in there. Why would I do it? We take God because when they pierced him in the side, out came blood and water. And there's healing in that blood. Glory to God. Many people came out of the water, went in with the condition, and left the condition off. That's, right. That's true. That blood that was shed, glory to God, yeah. healed them of their condition. I have to look past the condition. I have to look at God. I have to look past the condition and look at Scripture. Wonderful. No first church of the Lord Jesus Christ, no minister, no brother, no sister, bear not ever make a stipulation to anyone who wants to come in God's house because they sick. You can't come? That's different from what God said. God ain't saying you got to have a shot to be baptized. God said repent. Yeah. And we're going to keep it just like that. That's right. Why? That way it keep God's wrath away from you. That's true. And a wise person want to keep God's wrath far away from him. Never mind your personal views and your feelings. You know I don't care nothing about that. I have to keep it scriptural. Amen. Amen. I'm determined to keep it scriptural. That's why God bless us so much. Because I'm determined to keep it scriptural. I have no interest in no one personal views or feelings or ideology touching the scriptures. Don't bring it. I'm not interested. The moment you come to me. I'm interested in what God says. That's it, man. Wonderful. Thank God that woman had the issue of blood. She was pressing through the crowd trying to get a hold of Jesus. She said, if I can just touch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. And you mean to tell me somebody come in the building with that kind of faith? 
sick and believe God to heal them and you keep them out? No! Security better not do it. Nurses unit better not do it. If a person got a fever, that's a billion high. It's true. They want to come to God's house, turn them loose. Wonderful. Now imagine me coming in sick and someone tell me, you can't come in here. Who you think you're talking to? <laughs> that's right. If an old mother come in, frail and shaky, and she'll tell you, I want to get to God's house. I just, just let me get the God house. If I die, let me die in God house. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm telling you? Oh, yes. Amen. The way society do things and the way God does it is not the same. That's right. no. The way we think and the way God think is not the same. Oh, no. It's true. Jesus said, whosoever will. That got everybody under the sun. Everybody. Whosoever will, let him come. And if he said let him, ain't nothing I can do about that. That's right. Amen. That's true. Amen. Let him come. That's right. Amen. You never know what God had in store for that man or for that woman that day. That's true, man. Amen. So true. Amen. Amen. The Lord. The yeah. Lord is my shepherd. Is my, hallelujah. My protector, Amen. my keeper, my guide. Yeah. I shall not want. Amen. Don't have to want for nothing else. He maketh me to he lie make down. He maketh me lie down. In green pastures. Amen. I mend those pastures now. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, green pastures, you have to get to a point you experience those green pastures. I'm in those green pastures now. They're green. Frank, I'm, I'm, I'm eating a lot of green oh, pastures. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, man. Digesting a mouthful of scripture. Wonderful. Keep it green. green. Yeah. Profitable. What else? He leadeth me beside the still water. Wait a minute. There's still water and there's troubled water. Still. You see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Troubled water and the natural the wind be boisterous and the water is all over the place. Waves is tossing. Still water, me, he lead with me besides where? The still water. Waters that are calm. Water to represent your troubles. When the waters in your life is troubled, it's because there's a lot of wind, there's a lot of things blowing in your life. Then God speaks, peace be still. He calms those things. Wonderful. That's beautiful. And now the things in your life become as still waters because the power of God brings a calmness in your life. You know, listen, I know from experience, God can bring a calmness in your life that's out of the ordinary. And it is extremely extraordinary. I experienced that in falsehood. False prophet, amen, got over the pulpit and said, if Gino and Sister Darlene get married, I hope you drop dead. He told the folk, if you say amen to him, I'm going to throw you out the church. He set me down for a year. Asked me after that, can you preach what I preach? I said, I'll preach what the Bible said. He said, being that you want to preach what the Bible said, I'll call the chapter and the verse. I went to the chapter and verse that he wanted, and God, God, the Holy Ghost went to work. He set me down another year. In the midst of all that madness, God gave me a calmness. People was asking me, what are you going to do? I said, I ain't going to do nothing. I experienced a calmness from God in my teens that I never experienced before until then. Even now when heathens some years ago raged and thought they can destroy the church. Thought they can take my name and blacken it and taint it by using internet. They was trying everything. Yes. Different ones was telling me, why don't you get a lawyer? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? I said, I ain't going to waste my time, my energy, and my money for what? God gave me a calmness. Beautiful. I didn't even turn my back. 
What did I decide to do? I decided to step out and walk on water with Jesus. Oh, yes. yeah. When Peter, hallelujah, saw Jesus walking on water, he wanted to come out. Long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he stepped on water and walked. But the moment he started looking at the wind and the waves, he sunk and cried out to God to help him. When you take your eyes off God and start paying so much attention what you're dealing with, what you're faced with, what this one done to you, how long they've done it, that become a distraction until you can't see Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come a distraction. You lose focus. God is right there. Devil make you focus on how long you've been sick. How long you had that pain. How long you've been dealing with that problem. You focus on that more than you focus on God. Are you listening? When Peter began to focus on what was happening, the strongness of the wind and the tossing of the waves, he starts sinking. But as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on water. Meaning, God blessed him to be above his circumstances. Things going to splash in your life all the time. But keep Jesus focused. It ain't nobody going to walk and serve God and everything going to always be peaceful. No, God didn't design it like that. But keep going to God, keep the Lord focused. Yeah. When they say we wouldn't come out the basement, but I kept Jesus focused. Went to Briar Road and rented an Episcopalian recreation center. They say we ain't coming out of that, but we kept Jesus focused. Frankfurt Avenue, heathens tried to get the government, the law, to close the doors on us. And, amen. So we can lose it, but we kept our eyes on Jesus. When we first announced this campus, heathens got irate and tried to get everything to hinder it, but we kept our eyes on Jesus. This is what I want you to do. He said, the Lord is your shepherd. Oh, yeah. A shepherd is a sheep keeper. Yeah. The Lord is the keeper of the church. The provider, hallelujah, of the church. The supplier of the church. Stop trying to do this on your own. That's why we fail and keep failing and keep failing because we talk. Let God do it. But when it's time for something to be done, we try to do it. That's true. That's true. Don't talk out of one mouth. I'm going to let God do it. That's true. And then you keep trying to do it. That's right. When you let God do it, he don't need your help. Oh, no. Bible said, except the Lord build the house. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Except the Lord build the house, they live in vain. That build. I know there's some experience. Next year we would have been pastoring 38 years and preaching 46 years. Wonderful. I have a little bit of experience. That's a little bit of experience. The holy book says what? The Lord is my shepherd. Who is your shepherd? Yeah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. I shall not want. I don't have to go outside of him no. to want. Shall not want. Do you see what he says? Don't have to go outside of him to want. Because there's only one true provider, and that's God. That's right. 
when man try to be deeper than the Bible, broader than the Bible, you're going to make a fool out of yourself. Yes. Just stay within the confines of the Bible. Wonderful. Are you listening? Amen. Come on, son. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What is it? He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Yes. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He giveth me a sense of calmness and peace. He restored my he, soul. He restored what? He restored my, hallelujah, my soul. For your hallelujah. soul hallelujah. to be restored, hallelujah. Hallelujah. then Thank your you. soul hallelujah. must be falling apart. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Everybody's soul need restoration. That's it, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Everybody's soul needs to be restored. Glory to God. When your soul is restored, some healing is necessary. That's it. You expect for your soul to be restored? No fasting. Hardly no praying. We spend more time on internet and television than fasting and praying combined. And when you find yourself doing that, you ain't fit to keep complaining about the rut you're in. That's right. That's and you do absolutely nothing That's true. for the restoration of your soul. Then you're going to continue to fall apart. Only thing holding you together is God himself. That's it. Listen, glue, glue don't come out on its own to make something stick. You got to add some type of work to that tube to release the glue. You got some work to do to release that power that God have in heaven. No fasting, no praying, and all you do is keep complaining over and over of the condition that you're in. What are you doing? For your soul to be restored. Will I come to church? There ain't enough. That's right. Not enough. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. That's not enough. Oh no. That's not enough. No praying, no fasting. How you expect to be built up upon your holy sanctification? That's like a person that say, I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but there ain't enough to get you in. You got to have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. And then you got to strive to live sanctified, set apart for God total usage. He restored, he restores my soul. He leadeth yeah. me. Hey, listen, when your soul is restored, you'll find that happening moreover. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Because many times in life, you're going to find yourself falling apart. Yes, Feeling like you're mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically dismembered. That's true. And we're so busy running to people for restoration. Oh, and then get mad at him or her because they can't help. Bible ain't saying flesh gonna restore your soul. He restores he. my soul. He. You want your soul restored? Stop eating. Want your soul restored? Stop drinking. Want your soul restored? Bow down your ear. Bow down your heart. Before God. Don't wait to always praying in the group. Get away from everybody. You have to make this personal. Why? You got a condition. A condition that you keep whining about, but not doing nothing. Listen, you mean to tell me I keep complaining that the water is running? And I ain't got sense enough to turn it off. I guess keep looking at it, complaining. 
then how can I say I really want the water to stop when I won't make an effort to do anything? That's true. Why in the world would you even believe yourself? I want to come out of this. I want to come out of that. Yet you know what it takes to come out? And yet you won't do it? They shut your mouth. And that body that wants to be saved will do something about it. That's true. You that don't have the Holy Ghost. You really want the Holy Ghost? Are you seeking the Lord? I don't mean just wait to come to church in a prayer meeting. Are you seeking the Lord? Were you home by yourself? Do you shut yourself up in your room? Fall on your knees. Crown to heaven. Wonderful. Do you do that anytime? <laughs> Bible says he that hunger and thirst after righteousness, glory to God, shall be filled. The reason why you find people don't they don't hardly ever get on their knees and cry out to God about nothing is because their appetite is not there for the Holy Ghost the way it should be. Just like you that keep playing, oh, I can't get out this mental rut. I can't get out this spiritual rut. Do you fast? No. Do you pray? Barely. Shut your mouth up then. When you know what it takes to come out and you do nothing, shut your mouth up. That's truth, man. The Bible speaks plain. He restores my soul. He's there to restore you. What are you doing to welcome restoration? You know a man or a woman that get a vintage car and they want that thing restored, they don't just keep standing there looking at it. I want you restored. You need to be restored. Wonderful. I would like your grill to be shining the way it was when you came off the assembly line 38 years ago. All that talk, you got to do something. Oh, yeah. What you got to do? Start seeking. That's right. So you can find a place that specializes in restoration. Yeah. Seeking ye shall find. Right. Thank God. And then you go to the right place, that take every bolt. Dismember your car like a puzzle. Label everything. And make the necessary restoration. And in many cases, it looked better than it did. Who would take God when you off the assembly line 70 years ago? When you need restoration, you want to be better than you was. Than you were years ago. But you got to be willing to work at it and apply yourself and stop talking. You that got the Holy Ghost, how great is your appetite? Spend two and three and four hours watching one full show and can't even stay on your knees 15 minutes without losing your breath from prayer. Mm. And if you've been doing this same action, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years, you're lying to yourself to say, well, I'm doing something. You ain't doing nothing. Only time you're doing something when you do it according to the way God said it. Not because you think you're doing something. You're not doing nothing until you do it the way God said it. Excellent. Until you seek him the way he said it. He said, if you seek me, you'll be found of me. He said it, I believe it. That's right. How are you seeking him? I received the Holy Ghost at 11 years old. Many times I was in my room. At 11 years old, you love television. Couldn't wait to see the untouchables. Used to come on every night. Couldn't wait to see the untouchables. 
Couldn't wait to see Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porgy Pig. Couldn't wait to see Betty Boo. <laughs> Couldn't wait to see Popeye the Seller Man. See him and Brutus go at it. Couldn't wait to see it. Couldn't wait to see Ultraman. Couldn't wait to see Marine Boy. Couldn't wait to see Prince Planet and Johnny, Johnny Cypher. Amen. Couldn't wait to see Astro Boy. Uh -huh. But brother, when I wanted the Holy Ghost, if in times I would be in my room as a kid crying out to God because as a child I understood priority and my mother and father taught me in order to want and receive the Holy Ghost you must be hungry for it must be hungry, must be hungry. Even the false church I came out of, that's one thing he had right. He would tell you, you got the crowd to God like you need it. He would tell you, ain't none of you cute, so don't get on your knees like thinking you are. Where is your appetite for God? Do you long for a husband more than you long for a Holy Ghost? Do you long for a wife more than you long for the Holy Ghost? Do you long for money more than you long for the Holy Ghost? Many of us are not blessed and won't be blessed until we prioritize. And God is first. Wonderful. God is first in my life. Okay. Not my wife, not my children, not nobody. God first. And he had never slide down to second. Are you getting with him? Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is first. Not job, not real estate, not investments. God's first. Why? Wife. Children, husband, job, money, all of that is replaceable, but not God. Anyone think you ain't replaceable, you's a fool. Job's wife died. His children. God replaced all of it. Your husband died, God can replace it, give him another one. It ain't nobody in it. Only thing you can't replace, your soul. So where is God at in your life, in your venture for him? Where is he? How much do you want him? Do a scale in your life. A hypothetical scale, on a scale of one to ten. How, how would you rate your appetite to God? And if you hit a ten... That still ain't good enough. Sure. Make sure it's past that. And if it can't go past the scale until it break it, you in trouble. The Bible speaks plain. He that hunger and thirst after what's right. He that's hungry and thirsty. A hungry man and a person that just want to eat, they're not the same. You can want to eat, but you ain't hungry. I've been hungry before, not because there was no food. I fast. Fast seven days and seven nights. Not suck a lightsaber or eat a halls or chew gum or one meal. No! Seven days and seven nights being led by the Holy Ghost on several occasions. I was hungry. Then later on in years, God dealt with me again to fast 12 days, 12 nights. On several occasions, I was hungry. So I know what it's like to be hungry, and I know what it's like not to be hungry, but 
You just got to want to eat a little something. It ain't the same. That's right. Now here come Jesus say, he that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they. Listen. In the book of Matthew chapter 5 and at verse 6. Blessed are they. Are they. Which do hunger. Which do hunger. And thirst. And thirst. After righteousness. Who it's that God after righteousness. For they shall be filled. What did he promise? For they, hallelujah, hallelujah. For they shall, shall be filled. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Shall be filled. Shall be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, thank God you don't want your appetite to be the same all the time. You want that appetite to increase, increase, increase. Why? Because you're missing something. The longer I went without food naturally, the greater my appetite was. The longer you go without the Holy Ghost spiritually, the greater your appetite should be. Are you listening? Amen. The Holy Ghost said, Blessed are they which hunger. God said you're blessed if do hunger. Wait a minute. He says what? Blessed are they which do hunger. Blessed are they which do hunger. And thirst after righteousness. If you're not hungry and you're not thirsty, you're not blessed. Blessed are they. Because God spoke plain here. Yeah. Blessed, blessed are, they are they which, which do, do hunger. Which do have an appetite for. And thirst. And they, they, they thirsty for. After righteousness. After what's right. For they shall be filled. He promised it. Shall be. All he want is for you to have the appetite. And he promised to do the rest. Oh, yeah. Shall be filled. When it's time for prayer in church. No one should be sitting reading scriptures. Time for prayer in church. No one reading scriptures. No one should be in the corner having a conversation. No instruments should be playing. No one should. Nothing. Sitting around talking like no one is praying. Nothing. There's a time for everything. All this prayer going around. Who are you? That you would be so disrespectful and just sit around and run off at your mouth, have that conversation, talking about a bunch of foolishness, playing instruments, as if you got so much Holy Ghost you can afford to hit music and not get on your knees. Let everything be quiet and hit your knees. No reading the Bible when it's prayer time. No time to discuss scriptures then. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. That's true, man. Wonderful. Close your Bibles up. Stop running off at your mouth unless you're talking to God. Time for prayer. Don't even hang out on the church grounds. I don't care who you're talking to. If you ain't proposed by 6 o'clock, get to them later. I'm going to ask you to marry. It's 6 o'clock. Time to pray. That's right. Let him or her wait. You go wait for the Holy Ghost on your knees and let them wait for your marriage. Many have won't get where they claim they want to be because they ain't doing nothing. Pastor Jen, I thought I heard you say a preacher can't tell the folk they ain't doing nothing. I'm telling you, if you ain't doing it the way God says it, what else are you doing? You ain't doing nothing until you do it the way God says it. Then it counts. That's right. Amen. That cell phone is such a distraction to keep folks from seeking God like they should. How in the world are you down on your knees trying to return a text? Mm. Let the text wait. Because a brother called you in church and then you went out and sat in your old car to talk to some two legged bum. Let them wait. Because some sister you want to talk to call you and you're on your knees, your phone should be off. It's God time. You better stop treating God like he's some object, some little piece of thing, and then you wonder why he won't do something for you. Look at how you treat him. You treat him as less than God. He deserve all attention. Glory to God. He deserve all praise. He deserve that you pray to him like you're hungry.
Pray through your pain. Pray through your headache. Sometimes you can't pray. You get down there and cry. Well, that's all right, too. The Spirit knows what's in your heart. He'll come and make intercession for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help. He knows what's there. That's the problem. That's one thing that's missing in these churches. Hardly no prayer at all. The less prayer, the more you're vulnerable for the powers of the devil. That's so true. You should create, as I said through the years. You want to create a prayerful atmosphere in God's house. Prayerful atmosphere. Everything on their knees ringing up heaven. Heaven just ringing. Just ringing, just crying out to God. Just ring. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't worry about what time it is. Just cry out to God. That's right. All right, listen. Yes. Do you hear what he says here? Blessed are they which do hunger. Do you got an appetite? And thirst. How big is it? Your appetite for some girl or for some man or for a confrontation or for money is greater than your appetite for God? Oh, no. I want to say, well, my appetite for God is the same way it was five years ago. You, 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 you pitiful. That's true. That's true. You're pitiful. Yeah. I would not dare want my appetite for God like it is now to be the same way it was five years ago. No. I want to see some improvement. What good is having natural success if my appetite for God is still the same, but naturally, I'm accomplishing this, I'm accomplishing that, I'm accomplishing the other. They ain't worth a dime. Where's God in the midst of all my success? Where is he at? If my success is here, but my longing for God, slipping, 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 slipping. If my longing for God slip, my soul become lost. Bless are they. You better hear this, viewer. You better hear this, hear this. God knows. This is a warning to you now. Bless are they. Which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Are you hungry? This is something that's been missing in churches for years. It's true. Oh, they're hungry to form a choir. They're hungry to have music. They're yeah. hungry to jump, hungry to shout, hungry for praise and testimony serves. But he bless are they, they which do hunger and which thirst. do hunger and thirst. After righteousness. After what's right. For they shall be filled. You need the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. Some of you that claim you got the Holy Ghost, you better make sure you have it. I don't mean making up some Betty Crocker tongue. <laughs> I don't mean making up some Rice crispy tongue. You know, when I was a kid, I couldn't stand Rice Krispies. But if I wanted cereal and that's what mama had in the house, you had to put sugar on it. That's right. I put sugar on it. And according to the commercial, you can hear them snap, crackle, and pop. And I would hear the Rice Krispies. Whether I like it or not, if I'm hungry enough, I'm eating that snack, cracker, and pop. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. When you really want the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, even if your knees get tired, sit down. But keep pulling on heaven. Backside get tired. Get back on your knees. Knees get tired. Sit on your side. Sides get tired. Stand up. I'm telling you what I done when I was seeking the Holy Ghost. Man, I was in every kind of position you can think of. I even laid on my back and crossed my legs. Wonderful. That got tired. I laid on my side. That got tired. Got on my knees. That got tired. Sat on the floor. That got tired. I start pacing the floor, calling on God. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why? The position wasn't going to stop God. When my mind and heart got in line with the way God wanted, glory to God, the windows of heaven opened up. Now the language, glory to God, came pouring out of my mouth when my mind and heart got in line, in sync. Mm. The more I prayed, thank God, the hungry I got. And when I didn't get it that next night, I came back again, more hungry. Wonderful. Didn't get it the next night, came back again, more hungry. Made me think of my younger sister, Pixie. I received the Holy Ghost on a Tuesday. 1974, month of May, May 7th. Pixie got angry with me. I mean, she got angry with me. Wanted to know why would the Lord fill me first? And we were kids. When I received the Holy Ghost that Tuesday, that ignited our appetite in Pixie. We always call a bird. Bird couldn't wait for Thursday to get here. Church doors was open. We went to that when they call the altar, the front. And we pulled on heaven. It's wonderful, man. Holy Ghost fell. Came down on bird. Kept her speaking in tongue. Why? Her appetite changed from Tuesday to Thursday. There was a change of appetite. Your appetite for God cannot remain the same. It must keep climbing. Keep climbing. Hallelujah. Keep climbing. You must become hungry and greedy and longing for God. A hungry man don't sit at the table with manners. A hungry man ain't sitting at no table with manners. He don't care if his pinky are up or down. He don't care about silverware. A hungry man know, oh man, I got food. He probably won't even talk. You be talking, he's down there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. You got, he's asking for more and his mouth is full. Wonderful. Got more chicken? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's true. He don't care if he look like an animal. No. He don't care if he look like a dog. Oh, no. All he knows their satisfaction. And now he's getting what he wants. That's right. How bad do you want the Lord? Compare your pursuit in career, in dollars, in promotion, in relationships, in marriage. How you pursue some girl or some boy. Compare all things you pursued with your pursuit of God. If anything outweigh your pursuit of God, don't insult yourself saying you're doing it right. right. That's right. You can stay on the phone for five hours and talk about nothing to a girl, nothing to a boy. And yet you can't get on your knees in your room and talk to God for five hours without falling asleep the first ten minutes. That's true. That's right. Go in your secret place. Secret place. Yes. The Lord is coming. Oh, yeah. And we all get older. Yes. That's right. Repenting and being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is good. But Jesus said you must be born of the water and of the spirit. Yeah. You must have the Holy Ghost to be in the body of Christ. The word of God says you're baptized by one spirit into one body. So at 11 years old. I received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. My appetite was off the chart. Even I was in a false church, but one teaching that he had, we was not allowed to play all that instrument playing. Why are you down there praying? No, no, no. Uh Uh-uh, no, no. No singing, no nothing, praying. You just sitting around while prayer going on, yarning, taking naps. Who are you? That's right. That's true. 
Who are you? Get on your knees. Old school, they, wasn't, they didn't even have carpet or pillows. They was on wooden, splendid, dusty floors. Pulling on heaven. Now we're too fashionable to kneel. We're too busy worrying about our, we do on our knees. Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Some put handkerchiefs and napkins on the floor. Your clothes ain't that good, you fool. Oh, thank God I wouldn't care for run, running your stocking from the tip of your toe all the way up until your stockings fall apart. When you want the Holy Ghost, you ain't paying none of that no mind. Jesus breathed on them and said, receive you the Holy Ghost. Come on back to the way God had it. Our priorities is messed up. Your natural accomplishments is all right. But there's none good but one. And that one is God. My mother and father instilled that in me. God is first. God, and I know I'm blessed today, spiritually and naturally, because I have put God first and never allow him to slide down second. And never will. In my life, God don't come second hallelujah, to nobody. For God to come second, something got to step in to be more important than him to me. I ain't met that. I ain't going to say I ain't met that yet. It don't exist. Before me and my wife got married, I stepped out of her life so she can receive the Holy Ghost. I knew I was in her way. I was in our teens. I was in her way and knew it and told her. I said, I'm not going to call you. Not coming to the house no more. See you in church, short conversation. Why? I wanted her to receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. She said, would you fast with me? I said, how many days? She said, three and three nights. I said, yes, I will. Wonderful. Holy Ghost was a top priority. That's right. Sit on some devilish foam three and four and five hours, wake up through the night, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning, calling the devil. Well, I can't sleep. Get on your knees then. Get on your knees then. Where's your hunger for God at? If you have no hunger for God, you're lost. Because the Holy Ghost said, Blessed are, Bless! they, are they which do hunger and thirst after Bless! Oh, yes! Blessed are, are you they. blessed? You ain't got no appetite. You ain't blessed. Blessed are they. Blessed! Are they which do Parker, hunger I'm and a thirst. blessed man. Hallelujah today. Yes, I am. I know who my God is. Thank God where all my blessings come from. Someone said, Pastor Genesis, is it hard to keep God first? That depends upon how much you love him. You know, when you love something and your love is right, you ain't got the struggle to keep that thing first. You know why? You love it more than anything. That don't mean you ain't gonna slip, make mistakes, sin. They don't mean that. But when you love God above everything, you don't let nothing take the place or replace the emotion that you have towards God with something else. That's wonderful, man. Good teaching. I mean, you young brothers ain't married. And yet that girl got you on the phone more than you are on your knees. Some of you sisters ain't married, but you are more eager to go out to dinner with Satan than you are to get on your knees. 
You look at, oh, this may be my chance. Chance to do what? Get married and be separated. Because they don't want to hear instructions. If you put God first, God will bless your marriage. And ain't no one can convince me of otherwise. God blessing to be upon your marriage. Your children will be blessed because of the parents putting God first. Blessing. That's what the Bible talking about. Cup running over. That means you're filling something in that cup, and then, but yet the saucer get the water also. Yeah. Eh? Because the saucer is under that cup, and then the cup run over, it hit the saucer, it hit the tank. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Eh? Many are blessed today because of somebody else. That's true. So true. Holy Ghost said Joseph Master House was blessed because of Joseph. Joseph Master was wicked, but Joseph Master House was blessed because of Joseph. When your cup run over, the blessings that fall in that cup, they start rolling over, fall on the saucer, start rolling over, fall on the table, then other things nearby get wet. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be God, cup running over. Hmm? Blessings start spilling on others. And yet the blessing that fall on them, they don't deserve it. But is a result of God blessing somebody else. Hallelujah, glory to God. Get a blessing and you didn't even ask for it. You wasn't even looking for it. But it's the after effect that God did for somebody else. Hallelujah. God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, you got to ask yourself, where did this come from? I didn't pray for this. That's right. The cup run over. It's the after effect that God bless somebody else. And then you benefit from God, somebody else's blessing. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go with it, God. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Bless. Are they? Are they? Hallelujah. Do hunger and thirst. They hunger and thirst. Hallelujah. Go with it, God. After righteousness. And thirst. After righteousness. After righteousness. For they shall be filled. Shall be. Ask God to increase your appetite. Don't be so lazy. Ask God to increase your appetite. Wonderful, man. Tell God you want your appetite to get stronger every day. Hallelujah. 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 Every day. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Until I cry on Monday better than I cried on Tuesday. Beautiful, man. Hallelujah. Ask God to increase your appetite. Hallelujah. 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 Bless. Hallelujah. Are they? Are they? Which do hunger and thirst. That do hunger and thirst after righteousness. I believe that. You can sit around and complain about your circumstances. All right. What is that Hallelujah. going to do? Hallelujah. What you Hallelujah. going to do about Hallelujah. it? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's talk about it. For what? Hallelujah. If you are not already talk, why don't you talk to God? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Put hallelujah, God first. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh, hallelujah. Tell him, say, oh, Pastor Dennis, I talk to God, hallelujah. but it's not the same because I don't hear a voice back. If I talk to God, if I don't hear a voice, that's all right with me. I just want to see some works. 
I want to feel God moving. Let me talk to him and let him work. Let me pray to him, but let God work. Many of us are in the condition that we're in. In the same lazy slump. And not doing absolutely nothing. Until you do it God's way. You ain't doing nothing. Where's your appetite? How strong is it? Hallelujah. How great is your thirst? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ain't got to wait till 6 o'clock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Or, or 5.30 or 5 o'clock. Hallelujah. When prayer start down here. Hallelujah. When the break is over, after the when the break is on, you can come down here anytime. Oh, yeah. Even if the musicians, if the musicians are playing the instrument, the moment they see one person come down and hit their knees, that music automatically gotta shut down. Right. Gotta shut down automatically. Why? Out of respect that somebody's pulling on heaven. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. I want to pull us all back to the old landmark. Amen. Or it's take God to the way church used to be. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Not this modern stuff. Oh, no, no. no. Come on. I'm going back to Bible to the way church was. That's it. That's it. You can't be a strong church with no prayer. Right. You can't be a strong people and no prayer. Bible said, let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak. How can a strong do anything and you ain't prayerful? You will never even be strong. That's true. No prayer? That's true. Speaking in tongue and God quickening my body ain't enough for me. I don't want to ever lose my appetite. If I feel my appetite going down, then some other appetite is going to come up. That's true. Yes, it is. That's true. If my appetite for God started decreasing, then the appetite for something else is going to start increasing. And if the appetite for something else surpass my appetite for God, I'm in spiritual trouble, God knows. Because if my appetite for God go down and my appetite for something else go up, I'm going to pursue that thing or things more than God. Are you listening to the old man? Amen. How hungry are you? Come on. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Oh, yeah. Go back to the 23rd Psalm. It's back in the book of Psalms 23. And that are you one. getting this, Williams? Yeah. All right, God, I want to build you up, Williams, while you're watching. Go ahead, take God and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Hey. Listen! Psalms 23, and that verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord, hallelujah, is my shepherd. I shall not want. Don't have to want for nothing. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Come on and lie in the scriptures, church. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He will calm the troubles in your life, give you peace like you never had. He restores my soul. Your soul is falling apart. He come along being the best mechanic, be the best restorer. Restore your mind that's broken. Restore your heart that's broken. Restore your spirit that's broken. Restore your body that's broken. Restore your life that's broken. Hallelujah. God is the restore. Restore of my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And after he restore you, he'll lead you where it's right at. For his name's sake. On behalf of his name. That means this. He'll, he'll lead you where it's right so you can be saved. For his name's sake. His Salvation name's sake. is in his name. Yeah. He'll lead you where it's right so you can be saved. For his name's sake. Why? Yea. Yeah. I walk through the valley. When I journey through the valley of, of the, the shadow, shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Are you listening? I'm in the valley of the shadow of death. He said, though I walk there, 
and the valley of the shadow of death in the valley where there is no light surrounded by a sinful wicked people I will fear no evil. Why, why will I not be afraid, Mark? For thou art, hallelujah, go oh, with me. People wonder what I said. I'm not afraid of nothing, I mean it. The only thing I'm scared of is God. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. prophet testified here. I will fear. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will evil. fear no evil. For thou art for with God me. is with me. Thy rod, thy rod, and thy staff, and thy staff, they comfort me. Hold it. Hallelujah. 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 This is why we travel anywhere. Hallelujah. And preach in any country. And don't worry about death Hallelujah. threats, all these death threats that come my direction. They don't come your direction for the gospel. They made me their target. Hallelujah. They want to kill me, your brother. They want to murder me, your brother. They want my tongue cut out. They wish that I was hung. It's true. Glory to God, but I'm comforted today. I will fear that we no go evil. in any country, any town, any village. And absolutely fear not a drop of evil. There's a rod. And thy staff. What does a rod and staff do? They comfort me. Hold it right there. Any, any mother over there got a cane? Anybody got a cane? Give me that cane, brother. Give me that cane. Give me, mother, give me that other cane right there. Thanks, sister. Now, what did he say? Thy rod. Hold it. Thy rod. And thy staff. And thy staff. They comfort me. That's my support. Come on, Jay. That's what he's talking. That's right. God is your support because you're in the valley of the shadow of death. You got rod and staff. They Meaning you got me. support on the left side and right side. Now your body can have comfort. What is that comfort? That if God support me, I may be wobbling in the valley, but I won't fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I won't fall because the rod and the staff, they comfort me. Oh, hallelujah. The rod and thy staff through all the circumcision, they come all the trials, all the opposition, thy rod, hallelujah, Wonderful. glory to God, and thy staff, they, and comfort, God, what? they comfort me, comfort, that's when I won't fall, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I may get shaky in hallelujah. faith, hallelujah. but my little hallelujah. faith, hallelujah. I'm going to rest hallelujah. on God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Wonderful. Thine rod and thy staff. And thy staff. They comfort thine rod. Hallelujah. And thy staff. Thine rod. Glory to God. And thy staff. That's your support. God. Wonderful, man. Is your support. And if God is your support, regardless of how weak you are, you'll find yourself can walk with him. You may be weak, but you can walk with her. You may be tired, but you can walk with her. You may be weary, but you can walk with her. Glory oh, to God. The Holy Ghost said, Thy rod and thy staff. Walk with her. They you may be weak now, but walk with her. You may be sick, but walk on her. Glory to God. Thy rod. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Wonderful. And I stand. They comfort it me. It comfort. It keep you from falling. Hallelujah. It keep your spot. Hallelujah. It keep you your hold. Hallelujah. Blood Hallelujah. pressure go up. Thank you. Thy rod. And I stand. And I stand. They I got heart power. Thy rod. And I stand. I got cancer. Thy rod. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, 
Wonderful, man. Yeah. Wonderful. Give it back to the right one. Wonderful. What is that? God rock. Hey, Rod! And I stand. Hallelujah! 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 Hey, Rod! And I stand. Hey, I stand. They comfort me. They comfort me. Wonderful, man. Hallelujah! My, my. Yes! Hey, Rod! Go with you, go! And I stand. They comfort me. Blessed be the great God of Abraham. They comfort me. What else he say, son? Thou prepares a table. Thou prepares a table before a table me. before me. Before what? Before me. Before me. In the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Are you getting it? Blessed be God. Wonderful, man. Thou prepare a table. A table. Before me. Before me. In the presence of my enemies. Now look. God can sit you right in the presence. Of my enemies. Of your enemy. That's it, man. He prepared a table. Before me. Right before you. In the presence of my enemies. Yes. Your enemies that you don't want to be around. Hallelujah. Don't want to speak Hallelujah. to. Hallelujah. Like you say I get along without them. It's all right. That's right. Now God step in. That's it. You say, you know what? I'm not going to let you avoid your enemy. I'm going to set a table. What do you mean? I'm going to bring your enemy to the truth mm. and spread the truth. You on one side, your enemy on the other. And he's going to make you both one until you both are brothers. You're both the sisters. And nobody is an enemy to the other. Hey! Hey! Prepare a table, a table before me in the presence Those of our enemies. God. Right in my presence of mine enemy. my enemy. And thou, what I have. Thou anointest my head. Thou anointed my head. With oil. Spirit of God to come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost to come on. My cup. My cup. Runneth over. I told you so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My cup. Runneth over. You get a cup of hot water or cold water. You fill that cup up. When it run over. Whatever's under it is going to get the effects. Yes, Whatever's around it is yeah. going to get the effects. Oh, yeah. That's the way it is with God. God blessings can come on you and then affect your enemy. That's right. That's Next thing true. you know, your enemy run up under you, the best friend you ever had. That's true. The same one you reject. That's true. Same one you despise. God will prepare a table and God will create circumstances. Now you and your enemy need each other. And now you, you both got to end up being brothers and sisters. Wonderful. Submitting to God. Wonderful. To Wonderful. God's orders and God's law. Excellent, man. Eh? Listen. Thou prepares a table. Thou prepares a table. In the, the, presence, of in my the enemy. presence of my enemy. Thou notice my head with oil. Spirit of the God come upon me. My cup runneth over. Uh, I'm full of blessings. Surely. Surely. Goodness and oh, mercy. Oh, praise his great name. Hallelujah. Surely. Goodness and mercy. God's goodness and mercy. And God's mercy shall follow me. How long? All the days of my life. Do you want that? Oh, yeah. Do you want it to follow yeah. sometime or all the days? All the days of my life. You want God's goodness Hallelujah. and Hallelujah. God's mercy. Hallelujah. Follow you. All the, days All the days of my life. And then what's the result? And I will dwell in the house of the Lord How long? forever. I'm going to stay in church. <laughs> hey! Hallelujah. Forever. I'm going to stay in church. Forever. I'm going to stay with God. Stay with God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Wonderful. Amen. I'm going to stay with God. Let God be your rod. Let God be your staff. In other words, let God be your support. Let God be your anchor. You will get weak and you will. But let God be your support. He'll run up under you with the word and you'll find yourself even you're spiritually weak and frail, but you can lean on him. That's it, man. Amen. And trust in him. Wonderful. Regardless of the task, regardless of the trial and the circumstance, Regardless of the sickness and level of sickness, make God your wrath, or rather your uh, rod, and make God 
your staff and your rod. Yeah, yeah. Let him support you. Wonderful. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. Oh, yeah. For he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stoning. And a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a jet and a snare. Let God be these things. He's willing to be what he said he will be. But he wants something out of us. That's right. And just like he's willing to be what he said he will be, we must be willing and obedient. He said you will eat the good of the land. That's right. Amen. And I can see that the church, the truth of God now, is eating the good of the land. Oh, yes. Eh? Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Glory to God. And we are determined to keep eating. So you let the Lord be your rod and your staff and your crutch. Stop trying to do things on your own. Trying to do this and trying to do that. Take matters in your own hands. And then you become frustrated because what you thought should work, don't work. And God said, my thoughts is not your thoughts. Why you think something should work and God didn't say it? That's mighty arrogant. So why you would even think, well, if I do this, that should work. No, 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 no. Do it the way God say do it. Let him be your fear. Let him be your rod. Glory to God. And let him be your staff. Make him your support. Wonderful. I don't care how weak. I'd rather be weaker than the weakest child of God on the planet. I'd rather be weaker than that person than leave God. Huh? I don't know how weak the weakest person is. I never met the weakest person in God. Never met him. I don't know whether it's a man or a woman. I don't know. There's millions of people in the world. But I'd rather be weaker than the weakest saint on the planet Earth than turn my back on God. Yeah. Wonderful. 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 Viewers, come out of the churches that you're in. Come out of the fake religions. Don't go into a new year in these fake man-made religions. Just stop it. Just stop playing around now. That goes for you that are here. You might as well get ready to do this thing like God ordered it. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, the apostle Peter stood up with the 11 on the day of Pentecost. Then and declared Peter, to them. Then Peter said, said to, them, to them, repent. You that's on social media, remember what I tell you. Don't argue, don't dispute. With no one That's right. who talked negative about the message. Because the devil got them online to give them attention. And then you be arguing with them and you're not paying attention to the message. Let them say what they want about Pastor Jennings. Let them call me anything. Let them call me any cuss word they can think of. If they can out cuss a sailor, I'm fine with it. I got a rod in one hand and a staff in the other. Yeah. We are comfort with all of them. When they call us the Antichrist, that's all right, I'm comfort with it. When they say I'm a false prophet, that's all right, I'm, I'm comfort with it. Thank God, because I got God Almighty just standing up and supporting me. Hallelujah. And you know what? I feel his support. I not only read it, I feel, uh, Kevin, I feel it. I feel it and know it. And everywhere I travel, the support of God is there. Before I get there, the support of heaven is there. Amen. The moment our airplane land, the support of heaven is already there, welcoming us on a tarmac and going through baggage claim. Amen. We'll be on baggage claim, and sometime uh, some of the brothers will say, What you think it's going to be this time, Pastor Jennings? I say, What kind of foolish question is that? Right. It isn't what I think it's going to be, it's what I know it got to be. Right. Yeah. Right. I know what it got to be. The Bible said, The Lord has spoken. Amen. They've called the whole earth from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. You that are here, it's time for you to give your life to God. Ain't no need to go from one year to the other. Still a fool. That's right. Pleasing the devil, drinking and clubbing and acting like a fool and hanging with these false prophets who's just playing with your soul with no fear. No fear. The Holy Ghost says what? In the book of Acts chapter 2 and at verse 38. What is it? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Be sorry about your wrong. And be baptized. Be sorry about your wrong. Who? Everybody. That's right. When you're sorry and convicted in your heart from the word, I won't have to argue with you about getting in water. Oh, no. Amen. I won't have to fight with you. Mm -mm. You will come gladly like the thousands are doing. 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sins. Get your sins washed away. You were born in the world with one sin. That's an inherited sin that you got from Adam. As a result of his disobedience from God, from disobeying God, you inherited his transgression. And now you begin to grow up and learn right from wrong and chose wrong over right. You became a sinner. So the Bible says repent. Not repent for the sin you inherited. You got to repent for the sins you've done. Godless sorrow worketh repentance unto life. That repentance, you got to feel remorse from your heart. Yeah. Not just run and get baptized because you have a good feeling that day. No, you have to be convicted in your heart. And go down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remission of sins. You get your sins washed away. And what did he promise? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I believe that. Yeah. What is it, Mark? For the promise. You hear what you hear what, you hear this. For viewers, the promise. Viewers, 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 do you hear this? Here's For your the, rod and your staff again. That's right. The promise is unto you. It's to you. And to your children. Your mother will get it. Your father will get it. Your children will get it. The father that's fighting the wife, the wife will receive the Holy Ghost and the baptism. The wife that threatened to leave the husband, before you know it, amen. He'll go down and water in the name of Jesus Christ. Children will receive it. Because God promised it. Wonderful. It's done to you and to your children and to them that is afar off. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the Bible said the Lord have spoken. He have called the whole earth. Bless God from the rising of the sun to the going down thereof. Wonderful. Anybody here want to obey the word of God and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ like the Bible says. Stand on your feet if you want it today. Wonderful. Anyone else? Anyone else? If not... All right. God gave us all something good. Amen. Blessed be the name of God. Come on back. Prayer. Prayer will begin at 530. Come on back. Hit your knees. You don't have to work tonight. Come on back. Hit your knees. Amen. The Lord want his people to come back to the old pathway. Some of you have gotten too content, comfortable. And your comfortableness have brought about self-deception. Mm -hmm. God wants you to come back to the way he ordered it. And when you do it the way he ordered it, it'll be like it was in the days of Solomon when the temple was filled with smoke. They up there in the main auditorium now. And they've been working since Monday. The new stone that has that was shipped in. It's going on the walls in the main auditorium now. And it looks beautiful too. Amen. Looks beautiful. New stone going up there. The old plaster's being repaired. The scaffolds are up from the floor to the ceiling. Amen. Let the new electrical wires and cables is being ran all through there. Amen. That's right, Frank. We're pushing it, brother. Amen. We want this thing to thunder continuously to the world. Amen. The world might as well accept the fact that the message of holiness is the message of God. That's true. Not this prosperity trash and fake healing. You ain't got time for that rubbish. God wants you to be holy. That means take his character. And God wants you to be sanctified. Set apart for his divine will and purpose. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God preserve you. Come on back at 5.30. Let us all stand. Under him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory and power both now and forever. Let the church say amen. amen.